welcome to the Vine Community Church. We are one week away from the one event. Previous years we'd have been traipsing down to the showground, putting up tents, uh, sitting around drinking coffee, rushing between um, venues of different sizes, either dodging rain showers or sweltering in the heat under canvas. But this year it's different. This year the one event is virtual and it's online, but it will prove to be an amazing experience. We'll talk about what's on offer later, but for now, let's enter into a time of worship before we hear some wonderful words from God. Join with me, please stand as we sing, as we praise, as we worship. I search the world
of it all You were worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory Spirit 
Normally we'd be travelling to the showground to pitch tents, to share time together sitting in a field, rushing between venues in cow sheds, exhibition centres and giant marquees. But this year is different. Like many churches, including our own, the one event is going online. This weekend we see a 24 hour youth event on a Thursday. And then on Friday, from six o'clock onwards, through to late on Saturday, there's a variety of events for all ages, including children's events, main events from what would have been the big top, through to seminars and late night entertainment. I really like you to engage with the one event this year. And because of that, we're not gonna have a service this coming Sunday. I wanna give you time to spend with your families, so that you can engage on Friday and on Saturday with the One Event Live. It'd be really good if you can invite friends to join you. Maybe invite them around for a cup of coffee or to sit in the garden and have it on in the background or even invite them along and watch it actively as we hear from people like Tony Miller. We can find a full programme of events on the One Event website but it kicks off at six o'clock on Friday with a kids session called The Power of Courage. And then we move through the evening with the big top session at eight o'clock with Bishop Tony Miller. And end the evening with The One Show, a late night session with amongst others, Tom Elliott. Saturday starts bright and early with The Breakfast Show with Joe Hargreaves starting at 7 a.m. Is there a 7am on a Saturday? Apparently so. There's an early morning Bible study starting at 8. 
and then kids sessions and full adult sessions throughout the morning. The guest speaker on Saturday morning is Anne Calver, who is sure to bring an amazing word from God. Saturday afternoon sees a seminar programme and more kids sessions. Which brings us into the main events of Saturday evening. Start off at 10 to 6 with tea with the Bengers. We then move into more content, including the big top session with Stuart Bell. The whole day finishes with a young adult takeover at, 20, at 10, 10 p.m. with the authentic takeover, which is sure to be lively and spirit-filled. This one event is your chance to engage even in lockdown. The one event is an amazing time. I'm sure people will have looked at the showground and wondered what goes on. I'm sure your friends would wonder what you get up to when you go. Well, this is a time to show them, to involve them. So invite somebody along. Join in with other people of the church. Invite them to come and join and watch with you. Share this experience. I'd also encourage you to give to the one event offering. We'll be doing that as individuals, as an individual family, Jen and I, but also as a church. And I'd encourage you to do the same. This church, like many, benefits immensely from the organisation that is ground level. And it's only right that we should sow and invest into that so that other churches and other projects can benefit too. If that's not something you can do, that's fine. This is free to air. Come along, join in from www.one-event.org.uk or find them on YouTube. If you can't see the sessions live, they'll be there to catch up for the week to come. to meet together and it's good to hear both from people bringing wisdom as we've done in the last few weeks but also to hear the words of God through prophecy and this week I want to share with you a prophetic message that's been recorded by a good friend and a member of Threshold Sarah Belcher but before I start I just want to set some context by reading Proverbs 29 18 and I'm going to read it from three different translations or versions of the Bible. Uh, the words mean the same, but it gives clarity around the meaning of this proverb. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Or we could articulate that as, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. It's really about us understanding what God is doing. And that brings me to the last version of this, which says, if people can't see what God is doing, they will stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. You have probably heard the saying that if a tree falls in a wood and no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound? People have debated that for years 
I want to tell you though, that when God speaks, God speaks. Even if nobody hears it or heeds it or follows it, God is constantly speaking to his people. And you know, during this time, I believe that God's been delivering his word to people more and more. There's been real clarity in the prophetic words that are being brought to this nation, to this world, and a real consistency across those prophetic words. At this time, God is speaking loudly to many. And there's a sense of unity between the prophetic voices, no matter what background or church or country they come from. There are real God words being birthed at this time. And I really believe that we need to listen to some of these prophetic words. And I say that carefully. We need to listen, not just to hear them, not just to flick between the various YouTube channels or messages on, on the radio, but to actively listen, to pray about the things that are being said, to digest them, to chew them up, to spit out the bits that are not wholesome, and to grasp hold of the bits that are truly of God. We need to see how these prophecies apply to us, both personally, but as a church, and as a nation, as a human race. You know, traditionally, if we look back through the Bible, prophets have held a number of roles. They've held an impending judgment. If we look at Jonah, it says, Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. You'll find that in Jonah 3 verse 4. As well as talking about the times of, that people are living in, as Jonah did, they advocate repentance. Jonah did that, but we also see that in 2 Kings. Because it says in 2 Kings 17, 13, the Lord warned Israel and Judah, throw all these prophets through. Sorry, shall I try that again? In 2 Kings 17, 13, the Lord warned Israel and Judah through all his prophets and seers, turn from your evil ways, observe my commands and decrees in accordance with the entire law that I commanded your ancestors to obey and that I delivered to you through my servants and prophets. You know, prophets convey messages from God to us, to the nations. In Jeremiah 4, 7, you can see that where he says, This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the Philistines before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. And they reveal future events. But also they're about the words uh, of, of man going to God and how we live together and, and that's really important that we grasp hold of the two-way nature of the prophetic. You know I believe the prophetic words that we're hearing in our nation at the moment clearly fit this pattern. They're speaking of the present concern, the present times we're living in with coronavirus, with job losses, with uncertainty, with people peddling fear, with people labelling others as, as failures or successors or no real understanding whatsoever. And they're calling for repentance. Now I want to be clear what we mean by repentance. When God calls for repentance, that is not for us to sit there and list all the bad things I've done. I've had an argument with my husband or my wife. I shouted at my kids. I didn't come to I didn't come to this video session for church on time. Um, oh, I've not read my Bible. I mean, it's not asking for that at all. What it's asking for us is to stop, to refocus on the on God, and to turn back and walk with Him. You know, we all fall short of the glory of God when we walk without him. And his one desire is that we come back and we sit and in his presence, we are covered by his love and we move forward together.
together. You know, Numbers tells us that prophetic words come through dreams and visions. And it's not the only place. If we think about Joel and the way he said that the young men would see visions and the old men would dream dreams. This is a common way of word that words from God come to us. In Numbers it says, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. They become that intermediary between God and man. You know, I want to come back to that Proverb 29 before we move on and listen to Sarah. Within Proverbs 29, we see two elements the revelation of God and the action or inaction of people. In the prophecy we're going to hear in a moment, in the prophetic vision that Sarah is going to unpack, we see those two elements. We see two-way communication between God and man, man and God. But we also see God calling us to do something and a requirement for a clear action. We're going to hear from Sarah. Sarah's really stepping out in faith recording these things. She's being incredibly obedient and incredibly brave. But God is using her amazingly. Let's listen to Sarah and what she says about this vision. Hi, I'm Sarah Belcher. And I'm bringing this word to you really with a sense of urgency, having prayed about it and spoken to wise people I'm accountable to, as always. There's a sense that this is a now word, that perhaps it's something we can consider and pray through together before we cross over to whatever is ahead. What I saw was a vast army of angels in the sky and they were overlooking what was like a scene from Exodus 13 where God had parted the Red Sea. The angels just filled the sky and they were watching and waiting. And then I saw people who were crossing over the route where the sea had been parted, where God was clearly holding the sea back for us, his church. And these people had carts and then I saw that a wheel had come off the cart in the front and this meant that some boxes had fallen off. Some of the boxes that were on the cart that looked like um, old luggage had fallen off and were on the ground and others were in a precarious state. And I took a look at some of these boxes, I was shown what was in some of them and some of them were holding trophies and idols and things like that that actually I knew should have been left behind. They were things that should have been discarded before the journey was made. There was a sense that people hadn't really been prepared and checked the carts over and actually that these boxes that should have been left behind had contributed to the fact that the, the wheel had now fallen off. And then there were other boxes with old treasures in that really needed to be kept safe and needed to be able to be taken to the other side as we crossed. And I saw a cart behind the first cart, which was full of babies. Now the babies, I believe, represented those who had come to faith during this season, those who were baby-like in their faith, those who had just started their journeys of faith but also it represented I believe the things that have been birthed in this season there's so many precious things that have been birthed in this season that God has done he's been doing a new thing and I believe that the babies also represented the things that had been birthed one thing I noticed about the cart with the babies in was that sadly it was held up it wasn't able to cross as quickly as it may have done because the cart in front was broken. I noticed that there were people who I believe were intercessors lining the shore 
on the side that people were crossing to and they were praying the cart safely across. I could tell it was just a really important time as the intercessors prayed the carts across to safety. Some of the angels were helping to fix the cartwheel, which was great. And I saw that some angels were dispatched to watch over the babies, which was really reassuring. But most of the angels were still stationary, watching and waiting. I wondered what they were doing, but soon saw that they were watching what appeared to be enemy disguised in the mountain rocks on the side that people had come from. The people had no sense of urgency, certainly not the same as when Pharaoh was, was chasing people across the sea. There was no sense of urgency, although I felt like there probably should have been. And I kept hearing, no, the enemy, no, the enemy. There didn't need to be a sense of fear at all, but there did need to be an awareness of an enemy behind us and a focus on God's presence ahead of us. And Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 came to mind. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. I also saw in the distance on the other side a camp that was set up in readiness for those who crossed over. And there was a real sense of celebration. People were telling stories of God's love and faithfulness around campfires. And I knew that the babies were going to find a safe place there in family as part of that camp. I also noticed that the, the camp was definitely temporary. And I knew that this was just one chapter, that there's more to come. You know, that's an amazing prophetic vision. It is encouraging, it is concerning, um, and it is challenging. It's encouraging because in the end, God is in charge. It is concerning because we are really being called to make sure that we move forward with God. We're being called to make sure that the things we're carrying forward into this new season of the things we should and are not the things we're being left behind, that should be left behind. And it's challenging because it's asking us to engage as individuals. You know, there's a number of parts of that, that prophetic vision that really struck home to me. Um, the first one is that, is that view of the babies. The view of the babies being the new things that are being birthed in this season and that are being held back because we are not prioritising them over the old things. How often do we let the old, traditional, familiar, we do it this way, we've always done it this way, get in the way of us stepping into what God wants of us, both of us individuals and as a church. The second set of imagery that really struck me in there was the idea that there is the enemy in the hills and the angels of God protecting us from that enemy. And the final one is what triggers that. And it was the role of those intercessors, those people praying in God's will. Those people looking at the situation and not fretting and panicking and running around trying to solve things, but praying earnestly for God to do something. I really think that God is calling a number of us within this church, a number of them listen to this video, to be prophets and intercessors. In prophecy, as we saw when we looked at this around Pentecost, is a message from God and it's meant to edify, to comfort, to 
courage and to exalt. And it may challenge and it may cause us to question the things we're doing, but its primary purpose is to build up us, to build up the church, to build up the kingdom. It's there to comfort, it's there to spur us on, and it's there to exhort us, to warn us and to get us into action. That's exactly what 1 Corinthians 14 tells us. You know, prophecy is always brought by somebody. Although it's the word of the Lord, although it results in the worship of God, it's always brought through somebody. It's not just something that happens. It takes us to step into the calling of God. And if God is calling you to be somebody that carries a prophetic word, if the Holy Spirit is putting that gift onto you and you're shining away and thinking, I don't know how to deal with this, I don't know whether I should, I don't know whether it's real, then I'm encouraging you today to come and speak to us, come and talk to us about what you're seeing. You heard at the beginning of that step. A video from Sarah that she checked it out with people that she trusted, people that understand um, the, the, the gifts of the Spirit, people that could go and test and chew over that prophecy and go, do you know Sarah, that's of God. Do the same. Start small. He's a big God and he's asking you to bring his words in where you are in a small the second thing I think God's calling us into is that intercessor uh, position. That praying on behalf of or for an individual or a group. And you know, Jesus is the greatest intercessor there is. It was prophesied, that's interesting, prophecy about an intercessor in Isaiah. And it says, therefore I will give him a portion among the ground. He will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the, with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. Oh, Jesus made that intercession at the time that he died on that cross. He bore all our sin. He saved us from every part of God's wrath. But you know, he goes on interceding for us. We know he sits at the right hand of the Father and he intercedes for us on a daily basis as we bring intercessory prayer to that, that heavenly throne room. Hebrews 7, 25 says, Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. You know, Jesus is there, but he intercedes when we call on him. And we're called to be intercessors. We're called to look around the situation we're in, our workplace, our home, all the things we're seeing on the news, our street, our nation, foreign nations, where, where images are beamed in time, living rooms day by day of suffering and hardship and inequality and persecution. We're called to pray for our neighbours and our enemies. Matthew 5, 44 says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We're called to intercede on their behalf. And Timothy tells us, I urge you, you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers and sessions and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. You know, we're called to take on not the worries of the people around us, but we're called to take on the concerns and lift them to God. We don't need to worry about them. We just need to recognise and call on God. And you know, sometimes that's easy. 
Sometimes it's easy to, to sit, to kneel, to stand and to pray. Oh God, heal this nation. Let's see your, you move across this land. Lord, we lift up the government. We, we ask that you give them wisdom, Lord, whatever political party they're from, Lord. We ask that you give them wisdom because you appoint the leaders. And we pray that you let them understand how to deal with the situation of the coronavirus, both in its short term, but also in the long term of how it affects individuals' lives as they move through, Lord. We ask that you bless the economy. We ask that you intercede into the health service. We give thanks for the people who, that you have got your hand on in those situations, Lord. We give thanks that you do something amazing day by day. And you know, sometimes it's not so easy and we don't know what to pray. But we're called to pray both in human words and to intercede in our spiritual tongue. Ephesians says, I'm praying the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, human and spiritual, spirit -filled. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Romans goes on and says, Romans 8 says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. How more effective can our prayers be than when they're lined up with the will of God? Oh, I thank God for the Holy Spirit, that he gave us that counsel, he gave us that companion, he gave us that empower, that we can communicate so closely with God. You know, when we intercede, when we get down, we pray within the will of God, it's effective in shaping the spiritual landscape and the physical landscape. The angels in Sarah's prof prophetic vision watched over those babies. They brought protection. They repaired the cart. They brought a physical effect. And they protected the nation from the enemies in the hills. I believe that they did that because of the cause of the intercessors on the bank of that sea that were interceding in prayer. And when they did, God's gracious response to that intercession was to direct his angel armies, affecting the spiritual landscape and the, and the physical world. And you know, I believe that's true when we pray. I believe that when we pray, God's gracious response is to do something in the holies, in the spiritual, and in the physical. You know, at this time, the whole concept of intercessors impacting both on God and on the spiritual forces behind the physical has really been on my heart. I feel that when we started the lockdown and coronavirus was hitting, we all threw ourselves into intercession with prayer. And I don't just mean this church, I mean, I mean generally. But you know, I think we're getting lazy. I think we're getting used to lockdown, particularly here in Lincolnshire, where, to be honest, it's not as bad as other parts of the country. It seems almost like it's not so real. I think God's asking us to come back to him, to come back and to pray, to come back and to intercede. Not just on a Sunday night when we pray together, although that's fantastic and I encourage you to join us on Zoom if you don't. But in our own prayer times, that doesn't need to be an hour, it doesn't need to be 10 minutes, it doesn't need to be 10 minutes, it can be while you're waiting for the cow to boil. Oh God, do something in this village. Oh God, do something in this city. Oh Lord, we just pray for the homeless, Lord. Uh, they've, they've been benefited so much by being in accommodation. That's going to come to an end. 
Lord, we pray that something will move in the hearts of our decision makers that will transform the ability of our councils to do something for those people. Or are you sure? God help them. You love them. You know them. Do something for them. You know, God is certainly on the move. We started this year pre coronavirus announcing that 2020 was the start of a new era. Something amazing was going to happen from God. Nobody could foresee, or God could foresee what's happening now. We certainly do. But it hasn't altered the fact that 2020 is the start of a new era and God is doing something amazing. God is certainly on the move. And Sarah finished her video with this. The camp was temporary. It was one chapter and there is more to come. I'm meant to that. You know, the enemy does not know what is to come. But he doesn't like the fact that God's people are arising. So now is the time to pray. Now is the time to respond to God. Now is the time to focus on both parts of Proverbs 29. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Now is the time to listen to the prophecies. Now is the time to bring the prophetic word if you're so gifted. And when they attend to what God reveals, they will be blessed. Now is the time to act. God is calling you, each of you, to know him in a personal relationship. If you've wandered away for a bit over this summer months, if you've, some of your disciplines have, uh, have fallen away, if you've not known him before, he's asking you to come back to him now. He's calling you to repent. He's calling you to turn around and say, God, I can't do this alone, I want to walk with you. And for those of you that know him, he's calling you to listen to his word. He's calling you to open your eyes and to intercede. And as you do that, he will instruct his heavenly arms to move and change situations. He will choose to break change. He will restore relationships. He will turn around people that you've been praying for for years and years because he is a just and gracious God. Let's pray. Father God, we just come before you and we say thank you that you intercede for us on that cross. That you took away everything that could be held against us. That you choose to wipe away the things we've done wrong because you love us and you want to spend time with us. Lord, we just pray for, for each person we ask your Holy Spirit to touch each and every one of us. We ask that you will impart those gifts, Lord, those gifts of prophecy and of visions and of dreams. We ask for, for words of knowledge, Lord. And we pray for those people that are called to be intercessors. We pray that you will give them faith that is unending. That gift of faith that when they speak, you listen. That when they speak and it's in line with your will, things happen. Holy Spirit, we ask that you move amongst us. Do something. Lord, I ask for a quickening of hearts as people respond to you. Lord, I ask for, for, for people to understand that, that where you are touching their lives. And Holy Spirit, I ask for your empowerment. Egypt, in Jesus' name. As we get to the end of the week, we move into the one event. We've got uh, a, a variety of things for the youth one day, and then for, for all ages over um, the, the Friday and the Saturday. It would be great for you to join in on those. It would be great for you to invite friends and neighbours to do that. You can guarantee that when that marquee was on the showground over the last number of years, people have wondered, Ooh, goes off inside there. Now is the time they can find out. 
prompt you can find. Get them to come around and have a coffee. Just leave it on in the back and see what God does. I pray that this, uh, this week is good for you, that you uh, get to engage with the one event, that you are blessed by what goes off. We hope to see some of you tonight on Zoom. If not, we'll catch up again in the week. God bless you.